Well, thank you so much for sitting down and taking the time to join us um, in this very important project that um, uplifts and highlights the voices of our students who we are here to serve, um, to make sure that we're looking at everything through an equity lens and that our um, equity mission aligns with the districts here at David Douglas High School. So I'll just um, give you the space and a moment to introduce yourself um, with your name and your grade. Uh, my name is Kanai Robertson and I am a senior here at David Douglas. Hi, my name is Jeremy Sward and I am a junior here at David Douglas. Perfect. Um, well, I'm going to start with um, some questions and just feel free to um, provide input how you feel necessary. The first question that I will ask is how connected do you feel to staff and teachers at your school? Honestly, it just depends on the teacher or the staff. There are definitely teachers and staff who will go out of their way to con make connections and they will go out of their way to make sure like they are there for students. But there are also the same about the same amount of teachers who will put up like a wall and they don't they, they won't share a lot of stuff or they won't make those connections and it's just kind of like they kind of have they might have the mindset that they're just teaching a class and they're and right now like i'm in the grow your own project and they like learning about having to make connections is so important and have not having that be there is some for a lot of students isn't good and it and you can see it in like how they like move forward in life and how they do in school. Like having those connections aren't there and it's and they, it's needed. And going off of what can I said, you can kind of tell when the teacher spends more time with the students and when they're more invested. Um, teacher, there's some teachers at the school who, if you're having a bad day and you're just not feeling the best, they will take and you're feeling a bit like gloomy and doom. Um, and you can like show that and your body language like shows that they will take the time to come up to you and talk to you and like hey are you okay do you need anything like making sure that you're okay and that you're um all situated and even afterwards they'll like tell you hey um the assignment that we did you're good you don't have to do it um, or they'll send you the resources later on if it's something important that you miss they will send it to you or talk to you after school or they will just take more time with you and invest a little bit more outside of just the class time that you guys have. Um, they want to know more about you instead of just your school. Um, they want to know like how things are outside of school, if you're involved in sports, the type of person you are, what you're involved in, what you like, what you don't like. like some teachers are more like my friends. Um, older friends, like someone I, who I can just go to and talk to if I have something going on. And that's something that I've come to appreciate here at Douglas. Um, and you mentioned um, your own program has your goals of what you want to do after high school impacted how you view this, the staff and teachers here? Yeah, I think because I want to be a teacher eventually and doing this and like learning and learning all the things that go into teaching and like all it entails like i feel like i'm more not more critical but like i'm noticing more things that not many people would about a teacher like a lot of students will maybe like the connection thing will go over their head or they just won't think about it but now that i feel like i'm in this program and like learning more about teaching i feel like it's something that i really wish it was more prevalent and it's more important to me after like learning so much. Um, and number two, overall, how much do you feel like you belong at your school? Um, I feel like I belong in some places. Definitely like you will, like last year I created my own space. I created a club and it was a space for people to feel accepted uh, for their identity. And I think I, I created the club is because I didn't feel accepted or open to any place I went. And I feel like for a long, for a lot of people, they feel like that as well. And a lot, like the older teachers, they, they, they may kind of like, they're like, they're grading and like, uh, it kind of is, makes you feel like that too. Cause like if whenever you're like, it, like a lot of students learn differently than each other. And it's a lot of minorities learn differently than other students. And some teachers are like fixed into just like their old ways and just they just like just like gr drill everything out. 
but like not everyone learns that way and in that way like in the classroom you might not feel accepted and like with groups on campus like if you don't have a specific group that you're part of you may also not feel accepted but being able be having the option to create a place for yourself or just network and find places for yourself is really uh, valuable that we have here but i think that like I said, like sometimes I feel like I'm accepted and sometimes I don't. And I think overall it needs to be more like I feel accepted everywhere instead of only in certain places. Like not only outside of school or outside of my club, but also in the in the classroom, in the halls, wherever. Um, at Douglas, we have a bunch of different programs and clubs. Um, we have um, Asian Student Union, Black Student Union, Indigenous uh, Student Union. Um, we have a bunch of different um, clubs that um, allow students to be, um, to have a safe place and to go somewhere where they feel welcomed and um, wanted. Um, me, um, being a part of BSU leadership and being a part of those many organizations that I am involved in, such as Student Council, Link Crew, uh, and now being the VP of Equity, um, I've seen that as students, like you have places that you can go, but there's places that there's some students who might not have a place to go to. And that's something that I feel like we as a school can work more of, like be better at uh, creating the, a space where for the students that don't like being a part of clubs or don't be don't like being a part of like sports or theater or orchestra um, they have their own space and they have their own um, place where they are welcomed and um, wanted because it's just good to know that you can have somewhere um, in school where you can go be with someone or go be somewhere where you're safe and you can just be yourself and that place is BSU for me. Um, I love that place. Going in there, talking to my friends, playing a game of Uno, talking about what's going on. Like it's a fun, inclusive space where I don't have to hide who I am or change how I talk or change myself or anybody. I can just be me. And I feel like every student should have that at school. And that's something that we can work out. Okay, how confident are you that adults at your school can have honest conversations with, with each other about race? And how do you see that? I feel like with that conversation and race being such a touchy subject, teachers have kind of um, backed off on the subject because of it being so like touchy touchy and not them not wanting to say the wrong thing. And I understand that. Um, but some places that I have seen it are, are um, English when reading a book like To Kill a Mockingbird and acknowledging parts of the book that may be insensitive to um, black students. And um, history when we're talking about segregation and parts of history that affected different races. And um, But I don't really see it in every single place, mainly just social studies classes and English classes when you guys are reading about different types of cultures and communities, but I would like to see it like everywhere I go. Just if you're in a class and you guys can maybe learn something that's not, um, maybe learn like an Italian style or just different style of doing it. So you're more exposed to the world instead of just one place. Like you learn multiple different um, cultures and have different kinds of experiences. Um, but when it goes to having honest conversations about race, um, it's hard and I understand that, um, uh, having a conversation about race is hard and can be challenging at times, but taking the time to show that, show and acknowledge it can mean the world to any, any community. And I feel like that's something that we can work on is even though it's hard, it's a hard topic to talk about, taking the time, sitting down with those members of those communities and sitting down with them and asking them, what can we do and how can we be better? Um, and that can go a long way. 
Do you think that there is a way to connect issues regarding race with every subject that we, in every class that we have at David Douglas? Um, yeah, like, talk, like art styles. Art styles, there's nothing at the school that we are doing that can't be done anywhere else in the world and that there isn't some type of different style for. So it's not like there's just one fixed style on doing something like, maybe I guess math, but like that's just a universal style of doing it. Um, but for art, theater, cooking, literally anything that you can think of, writing, poetry, there's so many things that you can go off of and explore yourself to different styles of where you might not think about it like oh this is how they do it in Europe or this is how they do it in Australia like you just expand your mind to something new and one that's beneficial to not only the students but the teachers because they can learn something different everyone gets to learn and grow from it not just one singular person how often do you think about what students of different races ethnicities or cultures experience um, I think about it a lot being involved in so many groups um i've grown to like learn and appreciate like my friends that come from a different background as me because they have a different perspective when it comes to certain issues and i appreciate that because i it helps me see their view and like grow from it it's just constantly growing and constantly evolving to be someone better because when you have people who've gone through something that you haven't gone through and tell you about their experiences you learn from it and you grow from it. And that's something that really impactful to me because that's something that I will stick with for the rest of my life. And that's something that I can grow um, with. Oh, yeah, I think about, it's something I think about a lot too. It's, it's very, there are, like, like there are places where we can experience our cultures, but not seeing it every day, like it's not, if it's not there all the time, if it's not there constantly, if you if you meet like only if your club only meets every other week or every week once a week, then it's you're not gonna have a big cultural experience in the school. And I think that having such a diverse school, having a having those cultural experiences, not maybe every day, but like more often, is important. It's important for like the mental health of a lot of people or even just other people who want to learn more about other cultures. I think it's something that we should, something that should be there more. Do you have an, any examples from your past experience of maybe in a different school or in a different community that you, you kind of brings it to light here that you see it more at David Douglas? This school is a lot more diverse than any other school district. And that's just a fact. Um, David Douglas has a po student population of roughly 3,000 students and roughly 80 or I would say like 60% to the least is people of different types of backgrounds. Um, if you look at other districts around the school, an example being Tiger Tualatin, um, they're a majority white school. You won't see that type of diversity like we have here. Um, and at the school, at Douglas, we do talk about and acknowledge other different types of races. We have um, assemblies where different club members get to perform a cultural event or host something. We have events. Um, most recently, we had a Black Student Union Gala that people were invited to. We have a Luna, Luna New Year party at the North South Cafeteria. Like our, our school district and our school has so much diversity and has incorporated it in so many different ways that I've gone to appreciate because I can see that side of someone else or I can see a different culture that's different from mine and I've grown to appreciate that. Um, but I feel like if we could have that more, because that's it's once in a while, um, it's consistent enough to where someone can see a different culture every day, but it's not as consistent as someone being a part of that culture can't experience their culture at school every single, like it's not consistent enough. So I feel like if we can work on that, 
as a school and allow people of those cultures to have a little bit more time with their with their people and with our culture, um, that would be nice. Um, at your school, how often are students encouraged to think more deeply about race-related topics? I would say once in a while, here and there. It depends on like, if we're talking about, it's either two cases. If we're reading a book that's um, about a different race or culture, or if something has gone on into the news, when George Floyd happened or Breonna Taylor, if one of those cases happens, then that's when we will talk about it. But any other time, it's not really brought up unless something happens to cause it to be brought up. Yeah. Yeah, I think honestly, and like he was saying, like you're saying, there are like every once in a while, you know, not every day. Like it depends, I guess, because like in English class or maybe in even in maybe in history class we are asked questions about like race related topics but we're not really encouraged like not, not that we're not encouraged but like they don't really go into like okay think more about it it's more just like okay what is your face value opinion and then we move on or what is your experiences then we move on we don't really like face it if that makes sense and in like english if we talk about like critical race theory it's kind of like we just under we just they just tell us what it means and what it is like we don't really go into it we don't really like we don't necessarily like understand how to put our own experiences into it or how to like notice something like that uh, in the real in the actual real world and so i think yes to an extent that they we are encouraged but maybe just only to a little extent I would also say, like, going thinking more back uh, on it, um, students are taught um, different lessons, and depending on the type of English teacher that you do have, you guys will have a sort set of books to read and have a lesson or curriculum about it, and go in deeper about the book. Um, depending on what type of book it is, mostly it being about um, either event that's happened or a novel. Um, it gives students, sometimes students get to have a chance to um, think about um, someone else's experience and learn from it. Like, um, like say if you read a book about um, being a being like going through the time period of segregation for example um and you learn more about how it was like to like go through that and you have an understanding of one how it was to live in that time period and you have you grow empathy and you just grow as a person knowing that's yes that that's difficult and that's that was challenging for someone and kind of go to appreciate what you have now and you want to cause change like you don't want that situation to have you don't want that situation to happen to you or to anyone else so it makes you grow from it um learning about different types of cultures and races and knowing issues that they have to go through every single day and wanting to help them like those are those are things that you learn from it yeah. Do you think the, those lessons being taught or talked about, those conversations being had, would help guide your peers in a culturally sensitive, sensitive direction? It, yeah, it definitely will help them like, be more culturally sensitive, for, yeah, for sure. Okay, and that goes into our last question. How well does your school help students speak out against racism? Uh, not well, to be honest. I think they promote being like stepping out and like, hey, like I'm someone who's being racist or hey, like speak up. But when you do speak up, when you do tell someone about your experiences, they kind of like, they, they, your voice is heard. You, they under, they like, we understand where you're coming from and like, we'll deal with it. But then they don't really deal with it. They kind of just tell you what you kind of want to hear 
and then they don't really do much with it. With my experience, at least, they it's like they're playing with like damage control almost, where they will work with you to an extent until it's until they're like, okay, we're at we're out of the clear, we're good, we can move on with like whatever now. And I just think that they should be better about that. And when they like tell us to like, to speak up or like step out and like they don't really or like know what is a like racist situation or like a microaggression, really bad microaggression situation. Like they don't tell us what it looks like. And they don't show us or they don't like explain to us like when we can speak out about what. And I think that that we should they should do that because at sometimes you don't even know like realize like oh hey that 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 wasn't okay or hey like that that person said something that's kind of off. I think. And when you, and like I said before, like when you do, like, hey, like, speak up about it, not much is done. Like, yeah, not much is done at all. Um, me being a part of um, student council and the equity team um, and just talking to administration, um, I have a little bit more insight when it comes to um, those situations and wanting to change those certain policies that affect minority groups like the hats and hoods policy. Um, talking to administration, trying to come up with a solution, but then at the end of the day, you're there like, yeah, we hear you, we see you, and we appreciate your voice and your voice does matter. But then they spin you around in a bunch of circles and nothing happens and nothing comes for that. Granted, there have been cases where you do speak your voice and we have had change through the, um, through the Grow Your Own program and um, the Black Studies program that we do have now, but there are still so, so many issues in our school that need to be addressed and that are being avoided. Um, like if a student, if a Black student's been um, insulted or being called a racial slur and goes up to administration and tells them, hey, this is what happened and this is how it affected me. If someone's being called a racial slur and you tell the student to just go ignore it and it's just a word, when that word personally affects them and their culture, I feel like that's not something that should be just take him lightly, like, oh yeah, it's fine. Like, it's just a word. Go on about your day and ignore it and we'll handle it. They say they handle it, but then it happens a few more times. If you've already gone to administration and they've chosen to do nothing for, for about it, you've kind of left with a, like, you don't know what to do next because like, you feel like you've exacerbated all your options. Now you're just there like taking all of this and you don't know what else to do. So as a school, I feel like we do need it change some things and there's some things I do need to grow from it um, and they don't really talk about it that much like we have signs that say how to be anti-racist um, but with the cases like that happen it's just like if you're gonna say that implement it don't just like if you're gonna talk the talk walk the walk you know like don't just say something and say that oh I'm gonna do it and then put it pull up a front and not do anything about it like it's not one it's not right and you have people who are being personally affected by this and that want to see this change but not, no change is coming from it and without that change those issues are just going to continue happening over and over and over again and i might leave high school in the next two years but the same issues that were affecting me are the same issues that are gonna be affecting future generations of kids even well after I'm gone. So that change needs to happen now so future generations of kids don't have to go through what I happened to and actually have an environment where they don't have to go through having to be called a racial slur and they can just go about their day and not have to go through a microaggression or go walking into class and when the first thing is being talked about or if the subject of racism is being talked about, everyone stares at them. That, that's not something that they're gonna have to go through. So I feel like we as a school and as a school district can grow from that. And I know there's plans and change coming from it. And I know change 
often takes a little bit longer than you would like it to. So, yeah. But change is happening. A staff member um, or someone at the school that I can go to whenever I have issues with uh, racism or race is Cam Rutherford. Uh, he's the SEI coordinator here at Douglas and he has helped me throughout this whole process of um, becoming, just learning more about it and educating not only myself but uh, a bunch of different uh, students of color at the school. Um, giving them the tools and information to learn how to defend, how to um, empower and speak up for themselves and handling not only talking to administration and about the issues that the, he sees going on at the school, but actively participating and talking to the students and giving them a voice, listening to them and being there for them. Cam Rutherford has been with me for the last month and a half or maybe two, um, helping me with a bunch of stuff and I really appreciate him. And a lot of students do here too. Um, yeah. You love it, Cam. For me, that person is Tara Williams. Last year, she helped me create the Indigenous Student Union, and she helped me make a spot, a place where Indigenous students and people felt welcome, and whoever wanted to learn more about our culture felt welcome. And we have definitely had those hard talks of racism and microaggressions, and she was always there, like listen to me and validate my feelings and she always she was the, she's always there for me and so i've been with her for like last year almost two years now and she's the best she's really good and she she's really uh appreciate i'm really appreciative of her i appreciate you um yeah i appreciate all of our student body but the the staff member who's helped to push me through the really hard times because these are difficult conversations to have these are hard topics for people to talk about so it's easy to to run the other direction so someone who's given me the strength to keep fighting this good fight and keep being fueled by my passion is my co-chair hillary reed um, because we have so many different perspectives and lived experiences that that instead of using that to, to feel like the victim, we're using it to to feel like um, heroes in our own stories and helping to touch the lives and um, impact the staff members around us that directly impact you because it does, it's all connected. We are a community. Um, so she's really someone, it's important to find those people that you can lean on when you're feeling like you're not as strong, um, knowing that they can lean on you when they need it. Um, and that's just a beautiful relationship that I'm grateful for. We, we believe, believe in, in equity. equity.